Hey everyone and welcome back to your complete guide to Rocket League. In this video we are going to be looking at how to do a speed flip and how to translate that into a speed flip kickoff. Um, so the speed flip is a pretty advanced mechanic. I'd say if you're around at least the champ rank you should know how to do it whether or not you can actually execute it effectively is another story but you should know how to do it so I'm going to try to explain it to you guys um, here in this video so starting out the beginning of a speed flip is literally just a normal diagonal flip so if you can't do a diagonal flip consistently make sure that you are practicing to be able to get your stick in the right position for that as you can see on my controller overlay and then you're going to want to add a flip cancel into that so flip canceling kind of like how we flip cancel on a half flip uh, we're going to be canceling this diagonal flip by pulling the stick in the opposite direction so i'll show you that here so we do a diagonal flip but then we quickly move the analog stick down and to the right uh, if we're doing it to the left and then we do it down into the left if we're doing it to the right now I personally am really only good at speed flipping on the left side um, but I do recommend you guys learn it on both sides it's not totally necessary um, because I do still only use my left speed flip on pretty much every single kickoff um, but it is good to learn both of them because there's two different kickoff variations with the speed flip that I'll go into a little bit later. So now once you've gotten the corner flip with the flip cancel down, so you, your car is basically going to look like it's just rolling over and you're not going to be landing straight. Um, so you're going to want to be able to diagonal flip. So what I'm doing here with my car is I'm turning it slightly to the right before I diagonal flip so that it keeps me going straight. I thought I should mention that. Um, I almost always do that uh, unless I'm going for like the fastest possible speed flip and in that case you wouldn't turn as much to the right but uh, that's besides the point so you want to diagonal flip to the left cancel down and to the right and then you're going to want to use your air roll not uh, a directional air roll but your normal air roll button to air roll yourself back onto your wheels so what it looks like here make sure you watch my controller while i do this i go corner flip cancel and then i use my air roll on l1 to get my car facing forward again and that's literally the speed flip without boost pretty basic pretty simple once you can do that and land it going straight start to add a little bit of boost into it you know boost do the flip get supersonic and then you can just practice that here in free play for a little bit if you want to. Get comfortable with the mechanics, get comfortable with landing on your wheels. It's almost going to look like you're side flipping if you're doing this correctly. So just make sure you put some practice in here and we'll move into a training pack to actually test your speed flip um, and see how fast you can do it. So this is the training pack right here. Uh, it's called Musty Kick. By, uh, don't even want to try to pronounce that name but here's the download code for you guys to use and we're going to hop right into it so what this is is a progression of more and more difficult uh, speed flip tests essentially so the first three are pretty easy the fourth one is pretty tough and you have to do a really good speed flip to get it but then five and six are nearly impossible unless you do a perfect speed flip so I would say practice until you can get uh, the fourth one at least you know one out of three times and I'd say that's that's good enough because you don't necessarily need to do the speed flip perfectly to incorporate it into a good speed flip kickoff um, you simply need to have the extra speed that a very basic speed flip is going to give you to give you the advantage there so uh, I'll try to go through this real quick and show you guys how I would go about doing this. So here, pretty simple, just get to the ball in time. On this one, you can probably get there without doing a very good speed flip because I don't think my speed flip here was actually very good. 
but uh, I got there. So now we'll try this on the second test. And it's also important to uh, make sure that you wait before you start because if you go immediately when you reset the shot, your car's not going to be on the ground to start with and it's going to be nearly impossible for you to actually get there. So here, pass number two. And let's try number three. Got number three. And you can just try to shoot it on goal after you attempt it. But that's not really what we're focusing on. So now number four, this is where it starts to get really tough. As you can see, I almost made it. And there's number four. Uh, really tough to do a speed flip correctly, but once you get it, uh, it's very important to keep practicing and get that muscle memory down. Um, if we move into number five and number six, I forgot this initially, but these are actually setting you up to practice your speed flip on the corner kickoff, which is perfect because that's what I'm going to be talking about next anyways. So there's actually two different ways that you can do a speed flip kickoff. Um, the first is going to be the hook method and the other one I'm going to call the push method. And this basically is going to determine what direction you come at the ball or what direction you make contact with the ball. So for the hook method, you're going to want to be more on the inside and come around it so that you hit the ball more square in the middle, like so, where I'm speed flipping here and I come around the middle and I have the opportunity to kind of like hit it on net. Um, and this is much easier if you're on the opposite side of the way that you prefer to speed flip. So I prefer to speed flip to the left. And so it's going to be much easier for me to do this style of kickoff from the right side. And it's going to be the inverse if you prefer to speed flip to the right. You're going to be able to do this hook method better on the left side. So that's the hook method. We come in here, almost like you're going for the inside of the ball. You start facing the inside of the ball on the kickoff. You do your speed flip and you're able to go into the ball. Now I should also note that when you guys are doing your speed flips on your kickoff and when you're doing your speed flip in general, you're going to want to hit your jump button as quickly as possible to do your flip because if you hold down the first jump before you flip too long, uh, it's going to put you too high in the air. Because if you hold your jump button down, you go higher. If you just tap it, you stay much lower. And the idea is to get your wheels back on the ground as fast as possible so that you can actually control your challenge when you're going into the ball. So once again, the hook method, we wanna to start towards the inside of the ball, do our speed flip, and kind of come through it like so. Almost like you're going straight into the ball. Now for the push method, uh, this we're going to want to actually be pushing the ball to the outside. Um, and you're going to want to use this when you know you can beat the person you're going against on kickoff to the ball. And this is going to allow you to simply hit the ball around them. And in 1v1, it's very strong. It can possibly put it into their own net. Um, if you do this correctly, then again, if they also have a very good kickoff, it could go directly into your net. So it's kind of a high risk, high reward kickoff, but I'll show you that here. So you're going to want to start your flip facing the outside of the ball and um, you're going to finish going into almost like the side or the back corner of the ball. And I'll show you that here. So here I just turn a little bit more and I'm pushing it to the side. So once again, I'm pushing it to the outside, not worrying about getting around the ball, making uh, contact on the center of the ball, but focusing on just trying to get to the ball first. And you're going to see a lot of balls come off the sidewall here, and you'll probably be able to score them in a 1v1 situation. So now I'll show you the same types of kickoffs on the other side. This side is very hard for me to do a hook kickoff because of the way I, I use the left speed flip. Um, but it's going to look something more like this. You almost have to stop boosting if you're going to do that method from the left side. And then the push method um, from the left side, just like this. You're just going straight at the ball. 
and beating the opponent to it. So that's how you do a speed flip and how you incorporate it into your kickoff. Um, it really just takes practice, trial and error. Don't be afraid to do it in game. Uh, even if you don't think your kickoffs are going to be good enough and maybe your teammates are going to get mad at you, uh, don't worry about that. Just keep trying it, keep trying to learn it, keep trying to implement it. And once you get good at it, you're going to be winning a ton of kickoffs um, and you're going to be able to incorporate the speed flip into all aspects of your game. So hope this was informative. Hope you guys learned something and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Hello everyone and welcome back to your complete guide to Rocket League. In this video we're looking at a Champion 2, High Champ 1, Champ 2 gameplay um, of a 3v3 match from this guy uh, named Mizuha. And we're going to you know, give him some feedback, look at areas he could have done better, look at areas he did well, um, and try to learn from it. So let's hop right into the replay first of all i like his kickoff his kickoff is pretty solid um good job by his teammate to get a touch on that so this is kind of an awkward situation his teammate probably could have gone up the wall for this he's kind of he kind of put himself in a bad spot but he does a good job to get a touch there and then mizuha should just be letting this guy go um for this ball it looks like he recovered really well and it looks like he can follow it um so just letting him follow it is probably the best option but instead they double commit lucky that they didn't get blocked there um and now you just see some kind of like awkward positioning here mizuha is like really close to this um if this uh alex camo guy who's challenging actually wins the 50 then their team could be in a lot of trouble i don't know where classic is he's in the net so um so yeah, that's, uh, I mean, it could have been really bad, but uh, it works out. So he just needs to make sure that he's spacing a little bit better. There's pretty aggressive to go for, but it's fine. And his team take, takes possession. He's rotating back through the midfield, which is okay. And he does a good job to make up for his teammates mistake there. So here, um, after he hits this ball to the side, he should be coming off of the wall for this. Um, not necessarily jumping, but preemptively going onto the ground to catch it, to either dribble it or to flick it over this attacker. But they just ended up having like two guys on the ball here. Made it awkward, but um, once again, it, it worked. So here he got a, a bit too aggressive. Um, came in really fast, but did a good job to you know clear to the side kind of. And he should just be letting his teammate go here. He looks like he kind of got locked in on the ball and had blinders and didn't see that his teammates in front of him here um he should just be rotating to the net instead of trying to follow this ball so he makes this nice touch um and he should just be rotating to the net turning around 180 and facing outward but instead he ends up like getting right on top of his teammate and he gets bumped as well and it takes them both out of the play his rotation here is okay but i don't know why he's not um, preemptively moving closer here. Here it's pretty obvious his teammates in a bad spot and their net's wide open. It's very lucky that the third player on the opposing team wasn't there to score this um, because this is a very scorable opportunity. 
So, uh, Miz oh my goodness. So Mizuha needs to, he needed to recognize that situation a little bit better and cut in earlier um, to cut off that ball that comes out middle. So now we see a monster pinch and they score it. That is absolutely insane. So good on them for that. That was a cool shot. Uh, but it could have gone very poorly because he didn't cut uh, cut in fast enough. Uh, poor kickoff here. Not he flip. Okay, so one of the keys to winning kickoffs is to actually flip directly into the ball. And here you can see he flips off to the side instead of into it, um, and he loses the kickoff very badly. Probably should have been a goal, but his teammate's an absolute beast and uh, saves it for him. So this is fine here as well. Um, he could have faced towards the corner a bit better here uh, for this touch. It looks like he thinks the guy's going to hit it middle when he's not facing a direction that would indicate that he's going to hit the ball middle at all. Uh, and it makes it really awkward for him. So he has to actually put it in reverse real quick and then go forward. So here, once he gets his ball off of the corner, there's no reason to hit this ball away. Like, there's no one here. There's no one within... Uh, any amount of space that would be able to challenge him immediately. He needs, he just needs to slow down, take his time, uh, and dribble that ball. And then uh, hopefully they can get in some transition offense. I like this. He's turning up field um, when he sees there might be an opportunity, and then that is very scary when his teammate misses. So um, when you're around this rank, I'm, I'm sure you can't really trust your teammates too much to always hit the ball, but... Um, Yikes! So, um, so here, Jerome, Jerome McCulls, Jerome McCulls, he's in a bad spot. He probably shouldn't have gone on the wall here to begin with. Um, if we can switch over to him real quick, yeah, he needed to just stay on the ground. Probably going off the wall here is very difficult. It's something I would do, but it's not something I would recommend that. Uh, you do if you're not 100% comfortable in that position. And then you just get the own goal from Classic. So let's go back and see what actually led up to this goal. So the beginning of it um, started with the miss. And then you see Mizuha just kind of giving the ball away for free. And then Classic looks like he missed the challenge. Looks like he misses this. Yeah, so he's getting beat here by a mile, and he just needs to turn around and let this guy hit it. Um, instead, he overcommits and leaves this guy in a terrible position. Definitely savable here off of the bounce, but he r didn't read it correctly and, and just slots it into his own net. So that's a bit unfortunate, but... Um, it is still a tie game due to that uh, amazing pinch that they had. So now I don't quite understand why he's not actually trying to do anything here. So uh, the kickoff happens and they lose it, but he's just kind of like watching the ball um, instead of trying to rotate behind his teammate who's in the goal. So he should be actively trying to rotate behind here instead of leaving his teammate in a uh, uncomfortable one-on-one -on -one situation. So this is fine. He goes for the double, but um, not that close. But um, it, it was a good effort. And, you know, the more times he goes for it, the better he'll get at it. So this is fine. I like him picking up the pads in the midfield. I like him waiting for this guy to touch the ball away. And this hit across um, is, is really good, too. So I think this whole sequence here was very well done. Um, it showed some patience and some game sense. So it was good. I also like him cutting this off here because his teammate went on the went up the back wall on the opposite side of the goal, which makes absolutely no sense. Um, so he did a good job to cut that off there because that would have just been a wide open shot. Uh, okay, good speed on the challenge as well. Pass off the sidewall. Uh, not the best in terms of dribbling, but, um, but you know, that happens sometimes. Once again, uh, his control just isn't perfect. Um, yeah, when he's bringing that down, he could have brought it down around the defender instead of through it. And he's rotating very lazily here. So he brings this ball down and he loses it. 
Um, and he's he has eighty something boost, and he doesn't even see his teammate in net. But he's not using any boost or and not trying to actively position uh, in a way that if this Alex guy on the wall gets a really good pass, he's there to stop it. Instead, he's trusting this classic guy completely to win this. Um, and then when he doesn't, it's just a wide open net. I cannot believe that they missed that. So uh, really lucky. What he should have done is he should have rotated to the net a lot faster, used boost, and then power slide turned um, to face the play. But uh, pretty pretty lucky that there wasn't a goal there. Not quite sure why he's jumping off the wall, but that's okay. Once again, I see uh, a common theme in this game is people challenging the ball when they can't beat the person to the ball, and I see that a lot with people that I play with who are lower rank. They're constantly trying to challenge the ball without being able to actually beat someone to the ball, and they're just using extra boost and taking themselves out of position in the long term. So uh, make sure you're only going on balls that you can actually get to before the opponent. And if you can't beat them to the ball, make sure you're just fake challenging. This positioning's good. Um, this play is... I don't, I don't personally like this play. I mean, I think it's a good idea in theory, but he's going to need to hit this off of the ceiling probably if he's going to follow it up or go for a double touch off the backboard after hitting it really hard. Uh, so I just, I just don't love this play. He uses all of his boost to try for it and then uh, ends up caught out in their half. But good wave dash from the wall. Picks up the middle boost pads, which is perfect path in. And uh, he should be there to cut that off. His teammate thought that he had it, which honestly, I it could go either way. I prefer uh, Mizuha right here going for this ball instead of his teammate who's to his left, uh, just because I think he has a better angle and the other guy went back behind. So I think it's appropriate to cut him off there. And he gets the save as well. Uh, this is very, yeah, that's very risky. Um, the chances of you getting scored on here are extremely high if you don't just hit the ball. So he should just be hitting the brakes and then collecting the ball and pushing it to the corner. There, there's no need to come in here and turn around. You just waste a ton of time and allow them to get a shot. So, um, yeah, just slowing down and pushing it to the corner would be much safer much safer option not sure why i didn't go for mid boost there but it, it's fine because he ended up picking up all the boost pads that he should have there it's good for him to understand that he can't go for this ball that's way over his head um, and that his teammate would be in a better position so that's good his turn here is extremely long uh, he needs to power slide turn here uh, if this Alex guy is really good, then he just beats him to this ball by a mile, and it's a goal. So interesting. Lots of misses at this rank, which is not what you would expect typically from champ, champ one, champ two. Um, yeah, I'm okay with that aerial attempt. It's kind of weird going up aeroling, um, but I think his touch was decent enough he also didn't have much boost when he jumped so um, but I mean hey it was a it was a good job to get a touch on it gave his teammate a chance to actually shoot um, so overall I, I like the idea from it I don't love the execution but I like the idea so this is good rotation as well rotating into the first man position good beat on the wall and now he's back on defense um, this Jeromicles guy, uh, it looks like he panics a lot. Um, not really sure why he's pre-jumping this when the opponent's in the air, but, um, but it's all right. It doesn't negatively affect them. It doesn't look like unlucky on the bump there. I like how he was controlling the ball and he should just be going back here. Yeah. So he should be going back and classic should be filling this middle role and they would probably have a decent chance to actually score this. 
but for some reason classic didn't want to push up here he's like uh, i don't quite understand why he's so far away from the play like there's no way that they can score the ball over your head and you only have a minute left to actually score so um well now they can score it over your head <laughs> oh my holy moly what a game all right so if he's closer here he has a chance to score but instead he's super far away and it makes it awkward for himself so if he would have just played closer he would have been would have been better off and it would have been easier for him to deal with um but instead he's in a really tough spot so lucky that they missed here and a good beat by Jeromicles. And does he score this? Wow, barely sneaks it in through the top corner. That was nice, though. Um, I would almost say lucky, but it was nice either way. So, tie game, 49 seconds left. Let's see how their team closes it out. Uh, whoa. We got no reaction when the ball's coming directly at him. He just, like, doesn't turn at all. Um, definitely could have gotten, like, a power clear back towards where Classic is and possibly set up a play. I'm so... How did... He must not have been paying attention because this ball coming directly at him is uh, pretty obvious. But, oh, no. Now we got some miscommunication with some car body language. Uh, this Dramacles guy needs to just rotate behind him. Instead, he just completely... He makes him think that he's taking over the ball. And so Mizuha here turns away, uh, going to let Jeromicles go. But then Jeromicles is wanting Mizuha to go. So this is just really bad. Um, Jeromicles should be rotating back post away from the ball anyways. And then this wouldn't be a problem. But um, lucky that something worse didn't come out of that. Good challenges here. I like him picking up these pads. This is probably the best um, replay that I've seen from around this rank when it comes to picking up boost pads. Most people are like greeting for the 100 boost most of the time. So it's good to see a player that actually grabs the boost pads and no way they actually score. So, so right here, after he gets his big clear, he should be grabbing these pads and going upfield. So... Um, he needs to be participating in offense here, but instead he's, you know, trusting that his two teammates can handle it by themselves, which they probably can, but he can easily turn, grab like three or four more pads here. So I'll show you like the pathing that I'm talking about. So what he should be doing when he picks up this pad, he should be turning this way, picking up this pad, this pad, this pad, and then being like right here. And then when classic takes over, then he can shift himself over here, pick up these pads, um, and he would probably be uh, close to like 100 boosts by the time that he gets into the play. But uh, Classic ends up scoring, so it doesn't even matter. But in hindsight, that's probably what he should have done there. Um, and it looks like they'll probably close it out. You never know. A lot of players like to throw with about 20 seconds left, so we'll see. I think yeah i was gonna say i'm like i think i just heard a double commit so once again there's no reason for him to turn on this ball um he should be aware that his teammates jumping so if you have headphones on he should hear his teammate jumping right there and he should be stopping his aerial because this touch is not going to help them at all literally just hitting the ball forward to the other team's corner that that doesn't actually help and ultimately you're just throwing away boost um so letting your teammate behind you go for this especially when you're the one that went for kickoff you should just be rotating to the third man position um yeah it's uh it's pretty bad but yeah so now you see the other team get some pressure that is not a good touch from classic but um, mizuha makes a good turn here and stays on it uh i don't like that at all there's no reason to do this this is trying to throw the game, basically. Uh, actually, it's not. There's zero seconds left, and he's trying to hit it down. His teammate keeps it up, so that's uh, pretty bad from Jerome Coles, but not surprising he didn't have a great game. 
And uh, I guess that's the end of the replay. So pretty decent game overall. I think one of the biggest things that this guy can work on is um, just overall awareness of where his teammates are. There were a couple times where um, it seemed like he didn't know where his teammates were, or the positions that they were in, so it affected his rotation. But overall, this wasn't a terrible, a terrible game. I'd say another big area that um, he struggled in was just giving away possession. And uh, that would come down to just realizing how much space you have, how far away the opponents are, uh, taking control of the ball and trying to set up your team for an offensive attack. He also could work on his back post rotations. He likes to cut through the midfield a lot on his rotations, uh, which could affect his team on defense. It didn't affect them too much here, but uh, potentially that's something that he could also work on. So. That's pretty much it for the analysis. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope you learned something from it. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Hello everyone and welcome back to another video on positioning and um, if you guys are wondering why there's so many videos uh, about just positioning and rotation it's because it's one of the most important parts of the game and it's one of the parts of the game that's going to get you the furthest um, if you understand it correctly. So um, I realized that one of the areas that I haven't talked about all too much is how you should be rotating on the offensive half. I talked a lot about how in defense you should have players positioned somewhat like this and then the uh, cycle that happens between the positions here. But I didn't really talk about that on offense. So on offense, you're looking at this triangle position with your three attacking players you know, probably having the ball somewhere in here. Um, and then what happens after they make this pass to the middle, after they make the pass off the corner, after they take it up the wall and across? Well, that's going to um, really come down to how much boost they have in the tank. So this front attacking player, depending on how much boost they have, they're going to need to be able to determine whether they have time to go for this corner boost um, or if the other team has stopped this ball sufficiently and the ball is being pushed out this way, uh, if that is the case, they're going to need to turn and rotate behind the middleman, who is then going to be rotating in here after this guy goes to challenge the ball. So um, it's going to be very situational ultimately, so I'm going to try to make it very simple and just keep it to um, two scenarios in terms of what you should be doing and how you should be positioning based on those two scenarios. So that first scenario, the other team cuts off the ball. This person needs to be going here, picking up this boost pad, middle boost pad, other middle boost pad, heading directly back to the goal. Um, if this gets stopped, this person who is in the follow-up spot needs to come in and challenge this. If it goes up the wall, that would be their ball to go for as well. And then this person who is in the middle needs to slowly shift themselves over to the side of the field. Um, and that way, we're back kind of in our rotational cycle. And this person who's just challenging the ball can then rotate behind here. And this guy comes in, and then this guy goes in. Um, 
so so pretty pretty standard stuff it should just uh it's it's a lot of common sense uh, and just making sure that your teammates are going before you if you were the first person on the ball before so you were the one pushing the ball forward you probably shouldn't be going until both of your teammates have gone in front of you uh, granted that's going to change based on how far away they are and you know if there's a situation that you have to go for but most of the time you're going to stick to pathing to this midfield this personal challenge and your middle guy will path here. So if you're this middle guy, make sure that you're not getting sucked in to this play that's happening, to this challenge that's happening, because then you're leaving your guy who is just attacking on offense, who probably has low boost, maybe only picked up two to three boost pads on the way back, um, and they're going to be in a one-on-three for a while. So make sure if you were in this middle position, you're not over committing or double committing with this person who was in the follow-up role. So that's one of the main positions if you get stopped. Now, if you actually execute the pass across, this front person has a couple of choices as well. This person can decide, well, first of all, it depends on if they pick up this boost. So if they pick up this corner boost, they have a lot more options. They can rotate here, they can rotate over here, um, and they just need to be aware of what this person is doing before they do that. So if this person is shifting this way, then they would go for this outside role. If this person is shifting forward, then they would go for filling the midfield. It's all about filling space on the field um, and understanding uh, basically sectors that your teammates are covering for you. So if you don't pick this boost up and you cross the ball, it's best to just keep your momentum going and pick up this back corner boost. Um, granted, if this person gets stopped on their scoring attempt, on their shot attempt, it may be better to loop here and go for this mid boost and then turn. Um, so those are, those are two options. But if you guys have a lot of pressure on offense, it's better if you hit the ball off the wall or you pass it and then you head and take the defense corner boost. This is just going to starve them of their boost and uh, they're going to struggle struggle to keep up with the play. So now after you've taken this corner boost, you've made this pass, let's say your teammate goes for it and they miss, it goes off the backboard like this, this person will be rotating to the middle slot, you'll be rotating here for basically the follow-up slot, and this person should be rotating out here. So you're going to have a big gap in the back here and you just have to be aware of it you're probably going to be turning this way and then turning this way and turning this way and then turning this way using your power slide um, but you just have to be aware of the gaps in your position as you're playing so there's a lot of stuff that's going on here um, it may be kind of confusing to you uh, so you may have to watch it uh, over again or even you know hop into a private match with your friends and practice some of these positions that you're going to be in and understanding who is going to go for the ball in what position. Most of the time it's pretty well defined who should be going for each ball. It's going to be the closest person to the ball. Um, but if you guys aren't spacing correctly, if you guys aren't positioned uh, away from yourselves in a triangulated position, it may be more difficult to understand that. So just make sure you're spacing away from your teammates and you're ready for the plays that are happening. Now, if we look at the same type of thing in a 2v2 situation, which I also have not talked about, um, we're going to be looking at what this guy is doing with the ball. So if you pass this off the back wall, you're probably not going to have time to get the opposite corner boost um, and you're probably just going to run into this central teammate. Most of the time, if you're crossing it this way, um, the defense will either kick it back out this way or they'll take it across as well. And that's where the central person will be coming in to cut it off. So it's your job as the person who is initially on the ball to read what direction your central player is going and then to fill empty space um, that they're leaving behind. So say this guy's rotating over here after the ball goes here. 
then you can grab this mid boost and come back into the middle of the field. You also have the option to pick up this boost pad, this boost pad, this boost pad, and this boost pad and be there. Or you could even um, you could even path more direct like this boost pad, this boost pad, and be ready with around 20 boost um, for whatever happens. So with that in mind, um, the less boost you have, the more careful you have to be. Um, but, uh, but yeah, there's no real, uh, rules when it comes to positioning in 2v2. It's a little more freeform. So just make sure that you're spacing away from your teammate and you're not going for this boost while this person is trying to cut off the ball, um, that's coming over here. Cause then you're going to run into problems. You'll both be in this corner and you have, you know, all of this field that's wide open and a wide open net. So um, just make sure you're aware of where your teammates are going, where they're positioning, and you should be uh, good to go. Another big thing in 2v2 is just taking your time on the ball, which uh, we talk about in my 2v2 replay analysis. So make sure you watch that and you understand you know, what's going on, especially if you're a lower rank, you're watching some of the higher rank uh, gameplay analyses as well so that you understand you know what gameplay should look like and it's going to make it a lot easier for you to understand things like this so that's pretty much it for uh, for this video I don't want to overwhelm you with things but that should cover pretty much everything when it comes to position and rotation within Rocket League most other positions that you'll be in might be kind of random and there aren't going to be written rules just make sure that when you are a player that just challenged the ball that you're rotating behind your last teammate allowing your second teammate to go and then your third teammate to fill the second man spot so if you just go for the ball don't go for the ball again unless you're directly on it it's probably your teammate's ball to go for so Anyways, just keep that in mind as you're playing, um, and you should do just fine. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope it was educational for you, and uh, hope to see you guys on the field. Hello everyone and welcome back to your complete guide to Rocket League. In this video we are looking at how to perform a Cookser Pinch. So um, I actually have a training pack here for you guys. Code is on screen here. Um, go ahead and put that in your training browser and you can follow along with me as uh, we go over it. So let's hop into it. Now if you guys are not familiar, the Cookser pinch is essentially a pinch with the ball against the wall um, that goes into the opponent's net. So typically this pinch is going to be performed from your own half. Um, that's what's going to allow you to actually get the angle on the shot. It's very difficult to shoot if it's anywhere um, around midfield or on the other side of the field. So. Um, make sure when you're practicing and when you're trying to do it in game, you are doing it on your side. So you're just going to want to have the ball rolling towards the wall like so. And then you're going to be aerialing, air rolling your car and then flipping into it. So um, I'll show you how I do it here and you should get something on target, hopefully. So um, 
I've tried this multiple different ways and there's a lot of ways that people do it. Some people don't like to air roll their car when they do this. Um, I think air rolling the car makes it more consistent. So the position you want your car to be in when the ball is um, in position for you to actually pinch it is essentially sideways. You want your car to be sideways with your wheels facing the goal. I think that's the best way to put it because when you flip into it, that's the direction that you're going to end up pushing the ball. Um, another important thing to note is that when you're doing a coaxer pinch to get maximum power, especially with the octane, you're going to want to be flipping before you actually uh, make contact with the ball. So right before you make contact, then you flip and you get a ton of power. As you can see, it hit the backboard over the goal. Um, so you want to air roll and then get your car positioned so that you're flipping into the backside of the ball and then you're flipping right before you get to the ball. As you can see there, got a lot of power on it. Um, it was pretty low, but it was still 75 miles an hour going into the net um, after bouncing multiple times. So um, that's the basics of doing a cookster pinch. And it really just comes down to practicing it and getting comfortable with the setup. So when the ball goes up the wall, you don't want to do it when it's much higher than just over the uh, curve on the wall because you're not going to get the same uh, power on it and you're not going to have the same control. So there's a good example of uh, what to do right here. So you air roll up and then you flip before you get to the ball, um, hopefully into the back part of the ball. And that's going to give you maximum power. So once again on this side, there I went late. There I timed it pretty well, but it wasn't on target. It's kind of unlucky. Um, but yeah, you just got to keep trying, keep practicing, um, and keep attempting the pinches. That one's going to be too high. So... Yeah, it's all about the time that you put into it. Um, I've only scored like two or three of these in game. Uh, typically, they don't actually let you get the chance to do it because they see you setting it up for it. But at lower ranks, you can definitely catch people out. And even at higher ranks, in 1v1 especially, uh, people aren't going to expect it. So go ahead and uh, hop into this training pack. Try it out. Make sure you guys are air rolling into it and then flipping right before you get to the ball and that's going to allow you to pinch the ball super hard with the wall and you know hopefully it goes in the net for you so anyways i hope this tutorial was helpful for you if you're wondering how to do it um and i hope you can start trying to implement it into your own games so thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video Hello everyone and welcome back to your complete guide to Rocket League. In this episode we are going to be looking at a very high level mechanic, um, a mechanic that you're going to need to know how to do. Um, if you're really looking to push up the ranks around champ 2 and up and that's going to be the aerial double touch. Um, so I think the best way to do this is to show you guys with a training pack that I would personally recommend you guys to practice every single day. Go through this at least one time, um, trying to get a double touch with each one of these shots. 
and I think you will see drastic improvement in your aerial car control and your backboard reads overall, um, as well as just your shooting ability and um, getting having the ability to make a solid first touch on the ball. So I'll hop into this here, um, and this is just a wide variety of different shots that I created for this pack um, so that you can do aerial double touches. Not quite like that because I need to score it, but... Um, Pretty basic stuff, hit the ball off the backboard, follow it up, and score it. I say pretty basic, but um, I've been doing this for quite some time. So one of the biggest tips I can give you guys is when you're going up for the aerial, I like to air roll my car kind of to the side a bit and then move my car back into the ball, and that gives you more power. Um, and then as I'm hitting the ball, I air roll my car to turn um, towards where the ball's going on the backboard. Uh, so if I hit the ball to the left side, I'm most likely going to be air rolling left using my left right air roll. And if I hit the ball to the right, I'm most likely air rolling right. And um, that's just how I found works best for me. And I like to hit my double taps so that they're nice and clean where I'm finishing it with an upside down aerial backboard read. I feel like I'm more consistent with my shooting that way. Um, but if you feel more consistent, not air rolling at all, um, go for that. I just find that my recoveries after hitting it off the backboard are much better and much faster doing it this way. Um, but if your double taps look more like this, that's fine as well. Just making sure that you can hit the ball off the backboard and follow it up. That's literally what a double tap is. This is really hard to defend. Um, it's really going to force the defense to play some backboard defense to prevent the ball from ever actually getting into a position for you to be able to do this. Um, but it's really all about your first touch here. So like if your first touch is bad, you probably aren't going to be able to score. So it's all about timing, getting a good first touch here, um, getting a good hard first touch off the backboard, and then predicting where it's going to go and shaping your car um, in a way that's going to allow you to score the shot. So um, you can make this as difficult or as easy as you want. You can take them slower. You can try to really hit the ball hard off the backboard, follow it really closely and get more tight angles on it, um, things like that. So what I'm doing here is I'm just fast aerialing, um, hitting the ball hard towards the center of the backboard and then reading it. So um, I make this look pretty easy, but once again, this is like one of the most difficult mechanics in the game, and it's going to take you some time to learn. And practicing this has so many benefits in game, um, whether it's just aerial car control and your shooting, your passing ability, I just completely messed that up, but um, there's just so many benefits to learning how to hit double taps and control your car efficiently in the air. So that's pretty much it for showing you guys how to do double taps. Um, just go ahead, head into this training pack and see how well you do on it. It's going to be pretty tough for you. Uh, I'd say probably for the first week that you're doing this consistently, but slowly over time, you'll begin to hit more and more of these. Um, and yeah, just put in the time, put in the effort, and you will see results. Uh, trust me, because I have. I've been doing this training pack fairly consistently for around a year now, actually. Um, and I hit double taps in games fairly consistently. So uh, making sure you're putting in the time for this practice and you're hitting these shots consistently uh, it's going to pay dividends in the long run and you guys are going to be able to score much more difficult angles off of the backboard and create scoring opportunities for your teams so that's pretty much all i have to say there i uh, hope you guys learned something about how to hit double taps um, and i hope you go out there and you hit some double taps in your games anyways that'll about do it for me and i'll see you guys in the next video
Hello everyone and welcome back to Complete Guide to Rocket League. In this video we're going to be going over another very advanced mechanic and this is a mechanic that's used a lot in freestyling. Um, it's used in high level gameplay a lot. I use it for air dribbles and flip resets and that is controlling your car while using a directional air roll. So I personally use air roll right, which is what I recommend in my settings video. Um, but that basically just means that as long as I hold down my right bumper, I'm going to be spinning to the right. I'm going to be air rolling to the right. And a lot of people, um, you know, think that this is going to be basically impossible to, to control your car. Um, but you can break it down into a couple different, um, in, a, in a couple of different ways that's going to make it a lot easier for you to understand how your car is actually moving while you're air rolling. So one of those is going to be, um, holding your analog stick to the left, and that is going to create what's called a tornado spin, um, used in a lot of freestyling mechanics, and it just... Um, it looks like this. So basically your nose, the nose of your car is rotating in a big circle while your tail end of your car is rotating in a smaller circle. And then if you move your analog stick to the right, granted this will be inverse. If you're using arrow left, then you do a reverse tornado spin. So um, while you're air rolling, um, if you're looking to turn, there's a specific pattern that I look for when I'm trying to turn while using directional air roll. Um, and you'll see it on my controller light, uh, controller overlay. And that's basically going to be, um, you're basically going to want to keep your nose pointed in whatever direction you're trying to go. So say I'm trying to fly around the ball. I'm trying to keep my nose pointed at the ball. And I make this look pretty easy but this is going to be very difficult for people um, when you're just starting out. So um, I think you'll see I'm making a lot of adjustments on my analog stick here, and um, most of them are going to be to the left and also like upwards. So, um, and I just kind of cling to that when I'm, when I'm uh, turning. However, there are a lot of turning um, spots where when you're turning you're going to want to reverse tornado spin but for the most part when you're turning using your air roll you're going to be doing some form of a tornado spin to move your nose in the direction that you want to go um, granted you can look at the direction that I'm moving my analog stick uh, on the overlay and try to figure it out that way um, but probably the biggest way to actually just pick it up and learn it is to try to do this drill of flying around the ball and just move your analog stick in different sequences, um, you know, like to the left, maybe to the right a little bit. And eventually your body is going to pick up the muscle memory to be able to turn your car the way that you want. And another thing I like to do is I will control my car um, and do like small circles trying to keep my nose pointing, you know, like in one particular direction, basically like doing circle, imagine going in circles around an imaginary tiny ball. So um, that's just how I think about it. So you're basically just trying to keep your nose facing uh, the middle here as you're doing this. So um it's a very difficult mechanic to learn um, but once you get it down it's going to be muscle memory and it's actually pretty uh pretty easy once you get it down i think it took me uh it took me about two weeks of practicing this for close to an hour every day to really begin to understand how to actually turn my car and once you start to figure out how to control your car in free play like this you can hop into uh, it's the pillars map on free play as well. And you can fly around this map, um, probably with ball cam on, and basically do a figure eight pattern and control your car 
turning in this figure eight pattern. Goodness sakes, I need to work on this, I guess. Uh, but this is very helpful when it comes to certain aerials that are awkward. Um, air dribbling, I think, is a lot easier to control when you're air rolling. Um, and also, for me, getting flip resets is easier as well, which I will be doing a flip reset tutorial for this guide as well that will show you how to do it both with and without directional air roll. Um, personally, I think directional air roll makes it a lot easier. So the sooner you start on learning this and the sooner you start developing your ability to control your car while constantly spinning, um, the better off you're going to be when it comes to learning some of those higher level mechanics and hitting shots like Pulse of Ample and uh, crazy players like that. So, um, so I would recommend that you guys practice this at least 15 minutes a day when you're first starting to learn how to control your car air rolling 100% of the time um, because you're really going to just need that time to practice. And I'd say at that pace, you should be able to pick it up fairly quickly. It's going to take a couple weeks probably before you feel really comfortable. But um, once you get it down a little bit, I have a training pack for you guys to use. Um, and that would be this ground to air dribble pack that's going to help you um, kind of graduate from just doing the air dribbles to actually or just doing the uh, rotational spins to actually adding a ball into the equation so that you have something to aim for as you are spinning and it makes it a whole lot more um, entertaining to actually have a ball that you're trying to hit and you know hit in different directions while you're practicing um, instead of just hopping into free play and um, you know spending a long time in there just floating in the air so um, hopefully this uh, this guide was helpful for you guys hopefully you learned something and hopefully you can begin to apply this to your own gameplay Hey everyone and welcome back to your complete guide to Rocket League. In this video we are going to be going over the flip reset, how to do it exactly or how I recommend that you guys start doing it um, and then we'll get into some practice uh, for flip resets so that you guys can get going on that and start implementing it into your game. So first off I'm going to hop in uh, free play right here to just show you guys how you should be getting the flip reset so uh you can flip reset right side up but for the most part when you're getting a flip reset you're going to be upside down and like backwards um and so it's important to know how to fly backwards and how to control your car while you're inverted or like upside down so if you guys are not yet comfortable with that which at the point in the series where you're watching this video you should be comfortable with it but if you're not comfortable flying backwards, you can always, you know, practice that in free play or with workshop maps, just flying back and forth and getting used to flying backwards. So now once you're a pro at flying backwards, um, you're going to be able to set yourself up for the flip reset just a little bit better. So when you're getting a flip reset, you're going to want to be getting the flip reset on the 
uh, bottom to the mid part of the ball when it's in the air. And if you get a flip reset that's too low, you're not actually going to be able to score it. So I recommend doing a flip reset this way just because it's easier to convert. Later, you can work on some like uh, forward flip resets that are like a, the arsenal flip reset. Um, and those are also very good in game. So we're going to hop into a training pack here and I'm going to walk you guys through the actual steps of how to set up for a flip reset and how to do it off of the wall. So here's the training pack right here. It's called flip reset practice and here's the code on screen for you guys. Uh, make sure you copy that down, put it into your training browser and favorite it and then you'll be ready to go for the practice. So when it comes to flip resets, they're very similar to the setup for a ceiling shot. It's pretty much the same thing, but instead of going to the ceiling, you go to the ball to get your flip. So one of the biggest things is going to be your setup. So here I have the ball set in a position away from your car where you're actually going to have to either push the ball or hit the ball to get it to roll up the wall for your setup, which is going to be very important because in game, the ball's not just going to roll up the wall for you to do this on its own most of the time. Um, so you're going to have to get used to setting it up. So now once we hit the ball, our objective is to get the ball to roll up the wall uh, about like this high, maybe up to this line right above my car. And that's going to give us the perfect setup for the shot. Our ideal spot where we want to hit the ball off of the wall uh, is going to be like right here. And we want to be hitting the ball hard enough that it would go up to here if we had not hit it. So for example, I'm rolling the ball up the wall and it goes just above that line. I'd say that's just about perfect. Here, this one I hit uh, a little bit harder. That one probably isn't going to be a great setup. You can also go about it by rolling the ball up the wall. You roll it up here and that's about the perfect height. The main goal is you're trying to roll it up the wall in a spot where you're going to be coming off of the wall or chipping the ball off the wall about here, right above this line right here, that's kind of your goal spot of where you're hitting the ball. And then you're going to be jumping off the wall a little bit higher up, but we'll get into that. So once you have your roll down, it comes to chipping the ball off the wall. And you're just going to want to start off by practicing chipping the ball off the wall for yourself, but not actually following it, because you need to be able to chip the ball high and towards the net without hitting the ceiling. So here we'll do it again and chip the ball off the wall, and that's perfect. So now once we do the setup for it, we're going to chip the ball off the wall and we're going to tap our brake so that we stop. And this is going to be very important because we're going to want to tap our brake before we take off off of the wall um, because it's going to give us separation between us and the ball and make it easier for us to get the flip reset. So now we've practiced our setup multiple times we're pretty comfortable with it. We've hit the ball so that it goes off the wall towards the net, not hitting the ceiling. Now, how exactly do we get onto the ball for the flip reset? And that's going to be the difficult part. So you're going to have to come off of the wall, air roll so that your belly of your car is facing upwards. And then you're going to want to just slam your tires into the backside of the ball. And I prefer to use air roll right for this. Um, just because that's what I'm used to, but you can use normal directional air roll for it. I'll show you an example here if I can even do it because I haven't practiced it this way in a long time. Uh, but you come off the wall like this, slam your tires into the ball, and you get the flip reset. So you just come off the wall like you normally would to hit the ball, but then you just keep rotating even further um, so that the belly of your car is hitting the ball and you may not want to start with coming off of the wall for your flip resets you may want to start with just jumping from off of the ground and I'll show you guys a great pack where you can implement that into your game uh, right now all right so this is the training pack I was talking about it's called ball flip reset shots by Yiza and here is the download code on screen for you uh, this one has a lot of different variations that you can get a flip reset on and I'll go through some of them right here for you guys to kind of give you an example of what you can look out for. So on this particular shot, you're just getting a flip reset into like a double tap. 
Um, I didn't actually get the flip reset there, but if I can get it here, here I got the flip reset into the double tap. And then on this one, ball's rolling to you. If you go up to it, you get the flip reset. And then you can pretty much do whatever you want from there. But just practicing, you know, flipping, getting the reset, and then going into the ball. Kind of like that. So um, you guys probably aren't going to be able to do this very effectively. I'd say like the first week that you're practicing it, but you have to just continue to practice and put in the effort and eventually uh, it will pay off. So if you guys want to start out uh, just practicing, you know, flipping your car over backwards and then landing your tires on the ball, which is actually how I started learning how to flip reset before I even learned how to do it off of the wall. Uh, you're going, just going to want to have the ball roll to you and then you're going to want to aerial and get your tires on the car. So you just flip over like this, and then you can just flip into it like so. Um, you can also, you know, add a little pizzazz to it if you want, a little more air roll. But you're really just trying to slam your tires into the ball, and that'll result in the flip reset. So just remember you have to land all four tires on the ball at the same time to get the reset. It is like the most difficult mechanic in the game besides like stalls and stuff like that. So don't be discouraged if you can't do it perfectly uh, for I'd say like the first month that you're practicing it. I mean, I even mess up when I do it and I've been doing it for, I've been practicing flip resets for like a year. So, um, it is what it is. It's super tough, super difficult, but I hope with this tutorial you guys can implement it into your own games. So it's super important that once you chip it, you let it get some distance from you, and then you just have to get used to air rolling your car immediately after takeoff. So here I'll show you with the normal air roll left to right. Never mind, I won't. Um, should be able to get it there. And there you go. So, super fun, super fun to practice, super impressive mechanic. And uh, you can definitely implement it into twos games, threes games to set up passes and uh, to score goals in ones for sure. So, hope this was helpful. Hope you guys learned a lot. And I hope you guys can implement it into your games. I'll see you in the next video. Hello everyone and welcome back to your complete guide to Rocket League. Uh, this video is going to be a grand champion replay analysis um, of myself actually. So um, as you can see, there I am on the Puffins. Uh, it's my minor league esports 2v2 league team. Um, so this is a game from one of our league matches. Uh, against the wolves and every player in this lobby is grand champion or higher um and i think at the point that i was playing in this game i was around 1650 uh mmr so uh just keep that in mind as we we're going through this replay and uh you know let's hop straight into it so i uh, if i remember this correctly i think i played pretty well this game um but we will have to wait and find out. So we get a quick offensive attack, actually, and a nice score. So 
um, let's start this over real quick. So you can see my kickoff, which is exactly um, what I recommend for you guys in my kickoff tutorial. And I actually win the kickoff, which um, is very common if you use that kickoff strategy. And then my teammate does a great job of actually forcing out the defense in a tough position and uh, forcing the ball across, just allowing me to you know, go up fast and put it in the net. So once again, I win kickoff here. My teammate grabs the mid boost, so I grab the back boost. And um, this is just pretty standard play. I take the ball down to control it, beat one defender. Um, and then I kind of mess this area up right here, I think. So, so you notice here, I really took my time and baited this guy in before flicking it over him. Um, but then once I flicked it over him, it's basically a one-on-one. -on -one. What I needed to do here instead of um, what I actually did is I needed to try to catch this ball as it's coming down to try to get in position to dribble again. Instead, I catch it weird on the bounce, um, and it's kind of a tough position. I'm trying to read where he is and try to hit the ball around him, but he ends up going for this on the wall. I didn't expect him to do that, um, and it kind of destroyed my plan of passing it to my teammate. So um, my teammate Oates did a great job there of being in position uh, for that ball actually. And then I was in a quick one-on-one -on -one situation here and he just shot right away. So being in this one-on-one, -on -one, I don't have like any boost, but I can't afford to go for a big boost. Um, so the most important thing for me to do there is just to shadow him and wait for him to either shoot it or um, dribble it. So I actually do a really good job here of hitting it to the corner, allowing myself to get boost and buying us time. Uh, then they get a weak shot, and I aerial for this, but um, there's no reason for me to go for this ball in the air. There's uh, there's no one challenging. Defense is in an awkward spot, and this just kind of gives away possession. So here I just back off, let Oates go, and, um, and then I look to read where this guy's going on the wall. I get a good challenge. Tough read off the back wall there. Uh, pretty impressive read. And then here I'm just kind of in an awkward spot. In hindsight, I should have gone uh, probably fast right here and hit the ball against the wall and then tried to follow it again. Uh, but it was just a little awkward and I didn't feel comfortable going for it. So I just took my time. Once again, I, I kind of panicked here. So um, in hindsight, I should have just rotated back probably behind Oates and taken the second man slot. Uh, but me going there isn't absolutely terrible. I mean, it wasn't really a big threat. But here I'm just kind of turning in the midfield, which is kind of bad. I made up for it with a good stop. But uh, my position here definitely could have been more defensive. Um, I wasn't sure where that bounce was going to go. So I, I think I thought the bounce was going to go up. But when it came out, then, uh, then we were basically in a pretty tough spot. Um... I aerial fast for this though and was able to cut it off, which was which was good. So now we have to maintain defense, and this is a tough spot. Um, I tried to go for the squishy save. I thought it was bouncing like off of the corner, but it just rolls directly down. Just super unlucky. Um, and let's see, I I could have stopped and tried to aerial, but. It would have been super awkward, and I doubt I would have been able to get it. So, uh, good pressure from them. That's pretty much all that goal was, was they just had constant pressure on us, and uh, I made a mistake. So Now Oates goes for the solo play with the flip reset. It was a good try. See, I tried to beat him on this. Um, which means an okay play. There's no real risk in doing that either. And then I couldn't quite get the corner boost. So I'm trying to rotate behind Oates here. Oh my. Yeah, so he told me he was going here. So I assumed he would hit it. And then he, he missed it. So I had to make sure that ball went to the went to the corner. And now I'm here on defense with zero boost. And hopefully buying enough time for Oates to get back. Which he aerials for this. Uh, from a long way out. Which was really good, really smart. To, uh, to go for that. And I need to be picking up pads here. I missed two pads. I missed three pads. Um, and then I just give up possession here. So 
pretty pretty tough stuff um, for me. So I missed. Let's see how many pads I missed. So I missed one pad. I got one, and then I missed that pad. So that's two pads that I missed. Twenty four boosts that I could have had, and then I missed. Oh, I got that pad. So instead of twenty something boosts, I could have had forty something boosts. Would have been a little better off here. And instead of flicking and uh, jumping into this ball. I needed to just slow down and dribble it. There's no threat here. Um, I should have just looked to see where uh, this guy was and then waited. But instead, I, I gave the ball up and he got an amazing shot. So uh, once again, they're just kind of scoring off of their mistakes and off of their pressure, causing us to panic. So I just need to slow down a little bit and um, take my time. So here, this is good. I'm just controlling the ball. Probably shouldn't have jumped off the wall here. Um, if I stay on the wall, then I can recover a lot faster, but they, uh, they allowed Oats to actually control that. So this is good. I saw that. Okay. So on this play, I noticed, or, well, I thought the defender was in an awkward position because he actually jumped before Oats flipped into the ball. So I knew I could go for it and I got a really powerful shot over the top. So um, that worked out pretty well, basically like a fast break pass into a shot and they just weren't ready for it. So we take those. So here they get a shot. Uh, I should have just let Oates have it. I didn't think he had much boost. So I thought he would just let me have it, but it's all good. And here, that was, this is an awkward situation because typically, you know, the person in the corner is going to try to do something before they rotate out, but he just kind of rotated out without doing much, which is okay. Nothing wrong with that. And then I just got beat to that ball. So hindsight, um, I could have gone faster for this or I could have driven up the wall for it. And those probably would have been better options um, or just not gone for it at all. But here I'm rotating back, trying to help him out. And the last guy back gets a really bad touch, and I get a wide open net. Um, so yeah, here I'm just rotating back trying to demo this guy, and then I realize that you know we're in switching into offensive mode, and he's just going to be way out of the play. And it turns out that him going for a corner boost was the reason they got scored on. So um, now we're up three two, uh, feeling pretty good. Because these guys were pretty decent opponents. And uh, let's see how we finish out. So here, this is a bad first touch for me. Uh, off the wall here, I I don't know what I was trying to do. I think I was trying to roll the ball up the wall. And I ended up just like bouncing it super high. So here, I had to follow it really quickly to maintain possession. And then I just hit a nice, really soft pass off the wall. Um, for Oats, he told me he was rotating over. And uh, he bangs it in from behind me. It was perfect. So once again, we're on kickoff. You can see, guys, I'm winning like almost every single kickoff. Um, so my kickoff strat does work. Just got to make sure you put the time in for it. There I challenged and I couldn't really follow up. So I just kind of left it. And here I'm just looking to see where Oats is, if he's comfortable or not. He lets me take flick it over the first defender um, so this is all pretty good and then I messed up my shot so I just need to make sure that my forward momentum or I was I had some forward momentum going towards the ball before I flipped um, and that probably could have been a goal it's a decent play overall but the execution at the end wasn't great so here I'm in an awkward spot on defense so I'm rotating back in the middle of the field Oh, should be turning to cut this off which he is um, but then he misses the challenge on this ball. So I'm expecting him to challenge to cover the back side of the goal, like cover the middle of the field to push it to the right, giving um, Alpha Omega the only opportunity to actually shoot is at the near post, which I was covering. And he actually over pursues that challenge. Gets us in a tough spot. Oh, I didn't even remember this. Uh, must have been in a rule one here. Uh, for some time so uh, and then Oates oh he misses the dribble um, but yeah so I let my boys in a in a 1v1 with a minute something left 
and uh, not really sure how this rule one formed because my tires are on top of his car, but it's whatever. And then they end up scoring because of it, but not a big deal. You got to respect the rules of the game. Rule one, you got to stay locked when you guys are facing each other. So that's pretty funny. So here I'm just going back, letting Oates challenge because I had no boost. He does a great job getting a really tough hit and he misses the shot and I didn't read that bounce. So this is just pretty pretty standard stuff. I'm just going behind him, letting him go, you know, pushing up field with him. Uh, I expected a pass from him since he had a really tough angle and the defender was overcommitting. So hindsight for him, he, he should have just passed this ball. Um, the pass is wide open. It would have just been a free net, basically. But he goes for the shot, and it was close. But really tough for me to read that bounce off the inside post. And uh, now they're on the counterattack. Oates does an okay job of um, cutting that out. Even if he doesn't actually hit the ball, he makes him think he's going to hit the ball. So that was good. And then I get a good 50-50 here. Maybe a good 50. It was a, kind of a bad 50-50 it squirted it out to the middle. Um, let's see how much boost Oates had. Oates, Oates had plenty of boost if he wanted to jump for this. Um, but he was facing away from the play. So probably best that he didn't. He actually almost owned gold here. So I don't think he, he realized that I was already behind him to save this. Because um, he almost blocked me and, and put it into our own net. But um, it worked out. He couldn't get around it for a shot. Notice how I'm still staying back towards the goal because there's still threats uh, with zero boost. And I'm just trying to collect as many boost pads as I can uh, while staying back to protect the goal. So there I actually, I flip forward right as this challenge is about to happen, which is kind of bad because if Oats gets beat on that challenge, then we're pretty much screwed because my momentum is going away from our half. And here, I should just be scoring this. I just went super slow, and I missed. But that happens at pretty much every level. I mean, I can't I can't be shooting 100% every single game. So. so that's good. Try to get the pass back to the middle. Defender was ready as well. I'm just staying in front here to try to help bait out a touch for Oates to control here. So he does a good job. Beats the first defender, and he got a really weak shot. So... So here I'm just rotating behind him, letting him do his thing in a solo play. And he just doesn't quite get a get a hard shot with his second touch. He probably should have waited for it to bounce and then, you know, power shot it off the backboard. Would have made it really tough for the defender and allowed me to score it from a little bit better angle. But um, but it ended out ended up just fine. Here they had another opportunity, but as you notice, Oates was all the way back, so. My job here was just to try to cut off the cut off the pass. They sent out actually a really good pass, but not a great opportunity for them to shoot or dribble from this. So um, we ended up clinching the win. And that's going to do it for the replay. So areas I need to improve on uh, from this replay that I could have improved on are slowing down, controlling the ball a little bit more, um, working on my first touches as well um, and then working on just you know executing my solo plays a little bit better I I had a couple solo play opportunities that I messed up um, but that just comes with time and practice and putting in the hours and free play and working on your other mechanics but um, that's pretty much it uh, my rotation was pretty good, positioning was pretty decent. I didn't really get caught out all that much unless we had a lot of pressure on us and and it was tough. Um, and it was just tough to deal with in general. So overall, pretty decent game, uh, pretty good opponents. And uh, I hope you guys could learn something from watching it. So I'll see you guys in the next video.
Hello everyone and welcome back to the complete guide to Rocket League. In this video we are going to be looking at a replay from a uh, professional match actually. This is NRG versus G2. Um, this is NRG with Garrett G, Squishy, and Justin against Rizzo, Chicago, and JNAPS. Um, so we will be watching this replay primarily from Garrett G's perspective because I feel he's one of the most solid players positionally in the game. Um, and I think there's a lot of things that um, both I can learn from that and that you should be able to learn from it as well. Um, so we're going to hop into this replay, look at some things he does well, look at some things he can improve on, um, and just try to learn as much as possible. So let's hop right into it. So it looks like here, uh, okay, so Garrett does go for kickoff, and he loses it to Justin. And uh, nice. So as you can see here, he actually goes up for this, even though it's a really awkward angle because Squishy is pretty far away. And he does a great job to control the ball here and actually block this from Chicago and not actually make it a threat for his team. If you guys are noticing, uh, gameplay is much faster than any of the replays we've looked at before. Um, these guys are very used to playing with each other and very used to playing fast. So that's something you guys are going to notice. Um, so he does a good job keeping the ball in here. I actually wanted to back it up to um, to this scenario right here. So Squishy hits a really powerful ball forward here. Um, and instead of jumping for this read, which would have been really hard to get, and Jay Naps is probably hitting this ball anyways, he goes over to the side and waits for Jay Naps' touch. I think it's very important to note, and I think it's something that a lot of people do wrong online and ranked. So jump for balls that... Um, opponents on the backboard are going to be able to get anyway so he does a great job playing that patient and even here he makes a nice touch that you know he could potentially follow up on um, and he lets his team regroup uh, get boost in the back and move forward again Justin gets a really good 50 you can notice how Garrett was positioned in the midfield there uh, just in case there was a shot and here he's playing nice and patient going to take control of the ball not the best touch here Obviously, he could have caught this ball a little bit better, uh, kept it closer to him, not allowed Chicago to actually get a get across there, but um, nothing too dangerous for them overall. Justin does a great job to beat Jane Apps on that challenge, and now they're in a really good attacking position. Good ball across from Garrett, but nobody was there. Um, and here he's just rotating back, picking up boost pads, challenging that boost uh, with Rizzo, and just letting Squishy... You know, do whatever he wants to do in the air there. Actually got a really good air dribble bump. So, good pass from Justin. And it was a good cut on both sides on defense. So, um, this is all pretty just like really solid gameplay. Honestly, there's not much to pick apart here. You should note the spacing here. So, and also notice how fast that Garrett turns on this when it turns into an opportunity for offense. He turns immediately, recognizing that Squishy's getting the ball, giving him a passing outlet, um, and basically filling this gap that Justin would be filling if he didn't need boost. So, um, yep, playing aggressive, playing smart, and Squishy, being a mechanical god that he is, he just absolutely stuffs it through the defender and scores. So, nice stuff here. These guys rotate very well. Notice how they're not double committing hardly at all. He's rotating behind Squishy. Squishy actually probably didn't have boost to follow, so then he's forced to go for it. Um, and then he's rotating back here. Notice how he's supersonic the entire time he's rotating back to make sure that he's not leaving his team alone on defense. So it looks like here it was just awkward. So once again, Energy decides that they need to regroup back here and get boost so that they can build up another attack. Very smart strategy. And uh, this is actually a really nice pass into a shot from Rizzo. You don't see Rizzo scoring much, but really good speed there from Rizzo. So I think the problem in this play comes from uh, first Garrett not uh, reading this ball correctly, and then it comes from Justin jumping off this back wall too early. So had Justin waited 
for Chicago to hit that pass. Um, he probably could have had a better chance to get to it and block it, but um, instead uh, Rizzo was able to get a really fast shot, and honestly there was not much um, chance that they were going to save that. So, so here Garrett Ariel's in an awkward position, but that's just because Justin is far back. Um, they're obviously in comms while they're playing, so they'd be able to know where people are at and they can communicate that as well so here Justin goes for an air dribble notice how close Garrett is here to follow up just in case that a ball comes out in a position that he could shoot from and uh, here he's kind of he's hanging around here I think for a little too long maybe he could just be trying to grab the opponent's corner boost and rotate into that same position but uh, he's making himself available and he's putting himself in a decent spot, so not much to say there. That was a crazy shot, almost a goal here. So Garrett didn't leave himself with enough boost to follow this up. Not sure what happened to Justin here. Let me just... Oh, he had to dodge the bump. So um, really good pressure actually from G2 to force that out. And then Squishy was in an awkward spot to save this. If we hop over onto Squishy's perspective, as he's coming back here, yeah, he just wasn't ready for the shot. So pretty lucky that that wasn't on target. But um, but yeah, they should be ready to continue the play. Looks like G2 just has a ton of pressure, and that could have been a goal had Justin not save this so looked like Garrett got caught up in the middle of the traffic a little bit too much um, he could have rotated back behind Justin here or just jump for this actually I don't know that's tough because he probably wasn't blocking Jane apps so I guess he just had to wait on the shot and hope that Justin could save it so he's just really smart honestly so um I know I probably would have panicked in that situation, so just acknowledging that he doesn't panic when they're in tough situations is is something that I think we could all apply to our gameplay. Here's a good job cutting out the pass. Justin's following. Good ball off the backboard, and he goes for the double here. Um, I might have left that for my teammate. I don't know where Squishy is. Uh, yeah, Squishy probably wouldn't have been close enough to shoot it, so it makes sense that he tries to follow it up. Bit unlucky on the touch there, though. And here he's last back, just waiting for the other team to hit the ball around. They double commit, and he takes the boost, which is perfect. It actually forces one person out of the offensive attack, back into defense. And here's more awkward situations, but uh, looks like they deal with it just fine. Really good shot from Rizzo and good block from Justin and then another good read from Squishy. So um, I think this is another area um, I should address. Notice how close he is underneath the ball here. Typically this would be seen as a mistake, um, but in this particular situation, it's probably best to be directly under this uh, because the chance of a challenge happening and the ball dropping directly down is actually pretty high and he'll be able to just follow it up quickly, beat the opponent to the ball, and hopefully give Justin an opportunity to uh, take a shot. So pretty good job there. He does have zero boost here, so sh he should be looking for pads or the big boost, which he does. And Squishy and Justin just do a good job on offense. He actually like is able to pass the ball to Justin really well. Um, and the reason he doesn't aerial for this, which is really smart, probably something I would have aerialed for, is because he knows that if he aerials for that, he's not going to have any boost after he goes for it. And he doesn't actually have a teammate close to follow up his touch. So his awareness of where his teammates are uh, played a huge role in deciding not to jump for that particular ball. So here's cutting in across. I just want to see how this looks for Squishy because... Okay, so they so Squishy was back further, so this does make sense for Garrett to cut this across. And then Squishy's just playing really patient, waiting for the touches, and then he goes 
is really good. And then Garrett obviously turns on the wall here for the offensive um, for the offensive chance. He didn't actually get the ball, but it's all right. Just really clean passes. Um, good attempt on the double there as well. And you notice after he went for that ball, he rotated out behind the last man, let Squishy go, and then moved back into the play once the ball got past him. So really good stuff here. And they go into overtime, tied 1-1. Super close game. Pretty much anybody's game at this point. You see Squishy comes in and cuts it out. And now Garrett has to wait on Chicago's touch, and he does a great job to go to the backboard and get the power clear. And then Justin does a good job to play to the corner. You see here he's he was positioned um, to cut out the midfield pass if there was one. And Squishy is there for anything that's front post or on the backboard. So really just textbook positioning here. Justin's first on the ball. Garrett rotates behind Squishy because Squishy has a better position. And they're on offense again. That was a bit unlucky, I think. If Squishy wouldn't have blocked this, it would have been a good scoring opportunity, but uh, ultimately it's it's probably not a make or break moment for them, even though the overtime could have been over. Good aerial attempt there, maybe a little overzealous. I don't necessarily know if he needed to commit to that, um, but it's fine. Justin gets beat here, which is pretty scary if you're Garrett, but nobody was there to actually follow up the shot, and a good flick there as well applies some pressure and makes one defender miss so here they're just waiting for g2 to give them the ball he turns up field for the pass from justin and he's just getting bumped like crazy so not a whole lot that he can do there and squishy scores off of the wall shot so pretty much this game is a lot of you know taking your time with the possession and keeping the ball between your teammates um, rotation here in this game is like world class. Obviously, these are professionals who play this game for a living. Uh, so I would hope that their rotations and their understanding of strategic situations is is top notch. So uh, if you guys ever want to look at any of these pro replays, go on to uh, the website that I got this replay from was ballchasing.com. So go on to ballchasing.com and you can type in search for pro players only and get these replays and uh, go ahead and put them into your game if you're on PC and check them out for yourself. You can learn a lot from these um, and I personally have learned a lot from watching professionals play because their style of play is just so clean and effortless and their decision making is great. So anyways... I learned a lot today. I hope you guys learned a lot from watching this replay um, and getting my analysis of it. And I will see you guys later. Congratulations on completing the course. You've now gained an extensive amount of knowledge on how to succeed within Rocket League. If you have not already, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow my Twitch so that you guys can get access to even more Rocket League content and coaching. And if you haven't joined my Discord server yet, make sure to do that to connect with other people who are also trying to improve in Rocket League. It has been a pleasure 
to teach you throughout this course. And I hope that you guys continue to grind and get better at Rocket League. And I hope to see you all very soon.